Skilo plays. No, 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 no. Plays for days. No, no. no. What's good, everybody? It's your boy James Day, and you are now watching your favorite podcast, Talking Shit About Shit, where we have fun, get lit, and thank God while we're doing it, man. We are. Oh, this is amazing. Amazing. We got somebody in here I thought was never gonna make it, man. We got Nate Skilo in the building. Hey, Nate Skilo. Yeah. He had no faith in me, y'all. What up? Studio, <laughs> yeah. are you taking for the clock? No faith in me. That's my bad. That's my bad. I'm sorry. Man, go ahead and let them know your social media where they can reach you at, man. Y'all can follow me on all social media sites at Nate Skilo. That's N A T space. S-K-I-L-O. Big Tate Skilo Play will be dropping April 3rd uh, everywhere. You feel me? Like Google yeah, Play, Spotify, oh, iTunes, yeah. Apple Music. You feel me? Deezer, Tidal, YouTube, everything. You can Google me. All right, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. All right. So, for, not not for the future future, but the next couple months, what, what, you, what, you, got going, what you got going on for us? What, what can we expect from you? It's February right now, so... Like I said, April 3rd, I'm going to drop the mixtape Skilo Plays as my first project, you know what I'm saying? Spend a lot of time putting that together. I'm going to drop that bit April 3rd, and uh, I'm going to do the mixtape release party over in Screaming George at the Vault, reloading. Yeah, I'm going to do that bit. Ooh, that bit going to jump through the roof, I already know. So yeah, I got probably like, I'm going to put probably like 13 songs on that bit. So, Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get into this first segment. Y'all know my favorite segment. <laughs> we got uh the drink of the week. Ba, 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 ba. simple today. Nothing major. We're going to do some vodka shots. Just a little vodka shot to get your chair loose. Ah. Alrighty. You ready, Nate? Uh, hey, let me know. Hey, grab him. Hey, that's yours. Alright, we're going to tap him. Oh, oh, Lord. Just tap ah, Toast him? Toast him too. Just toast him to, hey, having a great, having a great 2020. I swear to God, 2K20, rap your rate. Ready? Great up at an hour too. This is a two shot. Man, I'm from Alma, man. Yeah, we get this shit right up there, man. Hey, boy. You know that shit do to an Alma nigga? Skip yeah. Play. Woo! No, no, no. Take that to the swamp, ain't it? I'm talking about it. 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 I'm Put a little helmet check. Right. I want to be a boy. <laughs> man. man, you whatever you need to do. So I ain't worried about that bullshit, man. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into the next segment. This is the guest spotlight. I'm going to ask you five questions. Five. 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 We're going to go ahead and get to these five questions. I just need you to be open and honest and give it everything. True. Straight truth. Right. All right. First question. What is the biggest obstacle you've overcome being a musician? Mm. That's a big question. How long I got to um, tell you about that? I think the biggest obstacle that I ever had overcome is like, Trying to become an industry artist is having to educate myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as the business part of it. You know what I'm saying? The music industry is hard because nobody's going to give you that type of no, they don't try to hold you back in, box you in. And there'd be a lot of people who around when they actually have that knowledge to give to you. They ain't going to tell you that. They ain't going to tell you, ain't it? So that's what I do. I go educate myself. I read up on everything. I read like I'm sitting in the prison cell. Yeah. And I just educate myself. 
All right, second question. We gotta go to the second question, man. All right, what do you enjoy and or hate about being a musician? I think what I enjoy the most about being a musician is being able to do my fans kind of like cold Whatever they do for my fans, you know what I'm saying? The people who like not support me, but the people who relate to me, you know what I'm saying? Like being able to help them get through the situation or whatever, give them an idea of how to get through a situation. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like everything. I kind of look at my mom and walk off. Ghetto gospel. Ghetto gospel. Yeah. Street corporate. And I think the thing that I hate the most. Ooh, the thing that I hate the most about being an artist, I got to. Mm -hmm. Great up now is the way other people look at me, mm -hmm. the way other people treat me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not being able to go nowhere without a motherfucker. Can I cuss? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I hate how they be like yeah. riding a nigga coattail. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm regular. I come from the hood. I yeah. just go still. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It be real shit. It be shit going on. So yeah, I just hate how they try to put me on the pedestal or try to say she this, she that. And a lot of people don't know me too. I hate that. Yeah, but you can't the same time. They say everybody needs somebody. God put people in your life for a reason, man. If you don't put them in your life for a reason, hey, that means they ain't supposed to be there. That's one thing out of life. So, all right. All right, these are good examples, man. If you could change one thing in the industry, what would it be? Just one thing that's just irky in the industry. I don't know, because I ain't really made it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I hear things about the industry, but I'm the type of person that just kind of see to myself, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know yet. I'm hoping they give me a good, you know what I'm saying? Good, you can love vibes, you know? I'm going to take my vibe, my energy to the industry anyway. And then see what it means to me. Yeah, it definitely got to be positive because I'm coming. Alright. Where is the state of hip hop culture in your mind? Is hip hop dead or alive to you? Uh, hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. So, I mean, the culture, period. I mean, dance, song, everything that's dealing with, you know, hip hop culture. Is it dead or alive to you? You know, I never really hear um, the word hip hop at all. Mm. Ever. It's not always around. I feel like people don't understand hip hop is a culture. Everything we do, the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we walk, is hip hop. And people don't understand that. So that's why I ask people this question, because it's like, I want I want to see where your mind is. So, basically, I don't know what hip hop you know, I got a little six pack right here. I was thinking about this. Eight, five, six, eight, four, eight. Yeah. Right now, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel yeah. like what they think hip hop is dead. I am hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Just because I kind of got the buzz that I need, the exposure. Like, I feel like hip hop has definitely died down. Mm. But I don't feel like it's dead because some of us in this generation, we still acknowledge hip hop. We right. know hip hop is. Very few, but some of us. Yeah, like a lot of people that I surround myself with, that's basically what we strive for to bring hip hop back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Other artists, my homeboys, that's just. I don't know. Real nighty baby. I feel you, boy. Really? <laughs> the authentic kind. Right, right. All right. What era would you place your music in? No, no, no. no. Um. For days. I think I place my music in this era. Cause this the era that they need to hear it is. I got a lot of shit to say. God. I think I place it in this era. Yeah. These the type of answers I need on the podcast. My brother the same kind, that is the same mind. Oh, God, I'm so glad. Yeah, so. Alright, man. 
Yes. I love the answers we got in this segment, but we got to go ahead and get into the next, the very next segment, man. This segment is called Nigga. Nigga. <laughs> like, you know, no, 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 no. I mean, like, nigga, like, you fucking up type nigga. Nigga, nigga, you trip. Oh, yeah. This, this nigga. nigga. That right there. This, this nigga. Right here. I'm actually about, I talked about this on last week's podcast, but we're going to talk about this again because it's still affecting the world. Right. Kobe Bryant and his daughter. Yeah. They so happen to die in a helicopter crash. Among other people, it was about nine people on the actual helicopter. So it's a lot, but we got to talk about it. We got to go ahead and like, you know, get your thoughts on it. What you thinking about it? Man, that, that kind of like, I I was a raw point guard. Yeah. Yeah. I was a raw point guard. 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 I was a raw that means that means no matter how good he thought he was, he, he, he always could be better. Ooh. This man died at 41. 41, understand, that's the, one of the greatest, like, if not the, if not the greatest, one of the greatest, like, top five at least, at least. So seeing him go, that's, that was a hurt thing to me. It's crazy, because it seemed like only black niggas die. You know what I'm saying? Like, Plays for days. No, no, no. I don't, I don't mean to make yeah, no you, can, you gotta look at the camera. Say, say that one more time for the camera. It so just seems like only black legends die. Even though we try to keep it. I don't mean to smoke you. I don't wanna hurt nobody. I wanna chill. Same time you always get. Look at Zimbabwe. Look at Trump. Same dead yet. And they done did everything in the world. Deserve to die. I come from a city ain't shit. With the snipers. Yeah. They're going to yeah. hit him with the snipers, man. Go that. Uh, I took a whip now. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I see. That's good for a loop. Yeah, it kind of it kind of, it kind of did. I feel, I, feel, I felt that one. I really felt that one. No lie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This next segment is called Testimony Time. This is a time where we thank God for bringing us through a situation where we swore we could make it. Like, I mean, we was on our last leg. If you, you, you got anything to, you know, add, like, hey, if it's on your mind, put it up. No, body just got no. Fucked up. This, this is that segment where I want people to be inspired. They feel like, okay, like, if you can make it through that, shit, I can definitely make it through this. Alright, um, so many of them. Don't I thank God? Mm. Um, not their God. Not the God that's in the Bible. Not the God that they tell us about. But my God. The God right. that I know. The God that you serve. Right. That was you. Speak on I think the hardest situation, I don't know. It's so it's so many of them. But I'm I'ma say I, I had lost my um my little sister and her mom. Like in 2009, uh, my little sister got kidnapped by her, by her father. And when well, it was May of 2009, and her mama went to go get her, October of 2009, when she went to go get her, she found the baby body, you know what I'm saying, the freezer. And I guess the nigga just, I don't know, he didn't want to tell nobody, so he ended up. Holding her hostage and killing her too, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, make a long story short, he hid the body. The boys go in South Florida. It was all over the It was crazy. First time I got to meet Obama, he came down, you know what I'm saying? He supported us. We found their bodies 2012. So that was three years they were missing, and we had to look for them day and night, day and night. The nigga who actually did it, he helped us look for them for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Ended up finding their bodies because his wife folded and told us where the bodies were. Don't know if they were not, but bones, but they kind of like took flesh out of my family, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, God brought me through that, had to, because I, I got locked up 2010, got caught, got locked up, and I didn't know what to do. I got locked up 2010, got caught, got locked up, and got sent to five years. So I was locked up when they found the body, you feel me? They had to come to the YDC and tell me what was going on. I made it through those. Yeah. That's my God, big God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with that we say, God is real. My God. I don't know about your God. I don't know about the God they told you about. But my God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 This has been a tremendous episode, man. Like, I, <laughs> we gonna go ahead and end it off, man. Woo! We made it. We made, made it, it, man. You did a great yeah. job. Straight through, man. Don't Y'all don't even understand. N-A-S-K-I-L-O. Follow me. Download me tape when it drop. You right. know what I'm saying? You see me on the social media. Show my shit. Come in like I show love that. You know what I'm saying? Cut through the color. Yeah, April 3rd, mixtape release. Mixtape release part of also don't listen, man. Don't miss this shit. I go nuts. They'll tell you I'm a great performer. I'm tell you. The crowd around me really walk the fuck out. For real. And guess what? Yeah. You should catch one. Oh, see you Catch a show. Oh, Everything about me ain't nothing. See that. Great camera too. We I'll definitely you, doing that. Oh. But. This was talking shit about shit. Uh, amazing episode, man. I thank y'all for watching, and we out. Put on the pill, swallow me a black. I don't wanna hurt, hurt nobody. nobody. That was the end of it there. <laughs>